When we started uh, formulating what the story was going to be for Ant-Man and the Wasp, we realized we are really making a, a sequel to two movies, uh, to Ant-Man and also to Captain America Civil War, because we couldn't ignore what had happened to Scott Lang in Civil War, which is he took the Ant-Man suit to sort of help this uh, Avengers infighting. And um, it struck me that that's Hank Pym's worst nightmare, is that Scott Lang, who he had entrusted with his Ant-Man technology, now is going to take it without asking and go fight with the Avengers. And, of course, he uh, ends up getting caught and put in this underwater prison, the raft. So that gave us a really organic jumping-off point because uh, the writers and I sat there and we talked about, well, how would Hank Pym react to that? How would Hope Van Dyne react to that? Um, and also, how would Scott react to it? Because that's Scott's worst nightmare, too, is being in a prison and not being able to see his daughter. So it really gave us a, uh, a natural starting point for this movie, and, and that was dealing with the ramifications of Scott's actions in Civil War. I think one of the things that I like in sequels in general is when you pick up the characters from the first movie not at the exact point you left off in the first movie. So Hank and Hope's relationship is really different in this movie than it was in the first movie. There was a lot of conflict between the two of them in the first movie because uh, Hank had maybe not told his daughter the truth about uh, her mother and was being overly protective with her. In the first movie, in the first movie, Hope is absolutely the one who should have been able to take care of Hank's problem for him. But he brought in Scott Lang because he was really being overly protective with his daughter. He didn't want her to put on the Ant-Man suit or anything like it because, of course, his, his wife had uh, met an untimely end doing the same thing. In this movie, uh, they've resolved those issues, and she's a fully formed hero. And Hank and Hope are working incredibly well together. Um, I think he's very proud of the fact that she's uh, taken on the mantle of, of Wasp. And they're also partners in this scientific endeavor, which is to build this quantum tunnel with the hopes of maybe bringing her mother back. Well, the real question in Ant-Man and the Wasp is, I think, on Hope's end, she's a fully formed hero, and she's estranged from Scott because Scott took the suit and, and went to help the Avengers without telling her. So I think she feels betrayed at the beginning of the movie, and it really occurs to her that maybe I don't need a partner at all. I'm doing really well as a hero on my own. Why would I need a partner? But because of this specific mission, uh, Hank and Hope are forced to bring Scott into it because they need some information that he has. Um, and throughout the course of the story, I think she remembers really kind of the feelings that she had for Scott and also the value that Scott has and the fact that he is, you know, a really good-hearted guy at the center of it and also a really heroic guy. But um, she's very conflicted about it. So the real arc of the movie between Scott and Hope is about, you know, should they be a partnership? Are they going to be able to be a partnership? And uh, throughout the course of the story and the events of the story, um, I think they, they realize that there might be a place for each other in their lives. Paul Rudd is um, such a specific actor, and I, I really do think that he's a guy who can do anything, drama or comedy. But what he does, I think, better than anything is he really brings life to the character of, of Scott Lang in this movie. Uh, and I think it's important because I've always viewed Scott Lang as the everyman of the Marvel Universe. You know, Scott Lang is not a billionaire. He's not a super scientist. Um, he's a pretty normal guy. And, you know, Ant-Man is really more about the suit, the technology. Um, he's a very heroic guy. But, you know, he's, he's a normal guy and I think a very relatable guy. And I think that's Paul Rudd's sweet spot. Janet is a, is a character in the comic books who's a really important character. As I said, she's one of the original Avengers. And when we were doing the flashback scene in the first movie, we didn't see Janet's face because she had the wasp suit on and had the mask. But we did see her eyes. And I was thinking when we were figuring out who was going to double her in that movie, it's like, you know... If we ever got to do Janet in a movie, Michelle Pfeiffer would be great. And I didn't know at that point we were going to make a second movie, much less one that dealt with Janet. Um, but we did, and we went out to Michelle Pfeiffer, and I met with her and sort of walked her through the story. And I've, I've been, always been a huge fan of hers, and uh, I love the idea of her being in this universe. 
I was thrilled when Lawrence Fishburne said yes uh, to playing Bill Foster. I had no idea that Lawrence Fishburne was such a comic book nerd. He'll go toe to toe with you about any Marvel hero. He just grew up reading the comics. And uh, I love the idea that he is a formidable presence with that amazing voice. And we needed someone like that who was gonna go up against Michael Douglas as Hank Pym. Uh, and the scenes with the two of them, I think, are terrific.